Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope everybody is learning from these uh, videos that I'm uh, taking the time to do on uh, cuckoo clock repair for beginners. Um, there's a lot of people who still have a lot of questions. Um, I have a video for almost every cuckoo clock out there so uh, if you take the time and search keywords like music uh, bushings um, cuckoo will not shut up stuff like that you will find it uh, timing a clock just uh that's the advantages of being a subscriber to my channel is searching the keywords but and you will get notified from youtube when i have a new video posted well this video is going to be on a clock that most clock collectors do not like they don't understand it and so um it's pertaining to a shots cuckoo clock and a shots cuckoo's clocks were made starting in the 1950s and they made them for about 10 years per the cuckoo clock repair manual and I'm going to read it to you. The biggest difference is one that any cuckoo clock aficionado would notice. And that is when the cuckooing, the cuckoo bird goes in and out of the case with each cuckoo. On other cuckoo clocks, the cuckoo bird stays out the whole time while cuckooing or at least it's supposed to stay out if it doesn't stay out then um, you have an issue and i have videos that discuss that but with shots cuckoo clocks the bird comes in and out of the door each time it cuckoos and therefore a lot of people do not like the shots cuckoo clocks uh, because of the slapping of the door. Um, you could find them barely cheap compared to other cuckoo clocks. But the, the best thing about the Shots cuckoo clocks, they did not make one day cuckoo clocks and they did not make musical cuckoo clocks. They all made eight-day cuckoo clocks. And you can tell it's a shots cuckoo clock by the movement. The back plate has a silhouette of a bird. And so um, let's get to it. Um, so kick back, relax. Grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab a cigarette if you so to choose to do so, and let's learn things. Yeah, I bought these clocks off of Sean Barnes. They were part of his boneyard clocks. And uh, I wanted them uh, and I bought them. So. This clock may or may not have a topper. I don't remember. But the shots is typically identified on the case or on the door. It will say shots. And on the movement itself, as you can see, there's a silhouette of a bird. Here's its tail. Here's its head and its beak. So we're going to go ahead and take the clock apart. We're going to take the movement apart. And we're going to discuss it. 
So first thing you got to do is take the hands off. The uh, shots, cuckoo clocks, like I said, they're all eight-day cuckoo clocks. They take a 1,200-gram weight. Now, I don't believe I have a 1,200-gram weight around here. You know, uh, uh, and uh, you can see there's a, uh, a metal compression piece with the hour hand. Um, like I said, I don't believe I have a 1200 gram weight around here. Weights for people who uh, work on cuckoo clocks can be hard to find, I guess you could say is the word, because you're constantly using uh, weights so I have to take the uh, the wire off the door and there's not much of a wire left on this door um, to attach to the door so I might have to be replacing this wire There we go. And I might have to replace the door. Taking the bellows out. Now you will see that on this particular shots that the uh, bellow that lifts the bird is on the right side. So this is the low note. Uh, I take that back and The high note lift bellow. But it's the one that lifts the bird. The shots made their own movements. The shots made several different clocks to include anniversary clocks. But what I like about the shots clocks is they identified the date that the movement was made and when I get this movement out of here we'll discuss that And I need to put a, even though that this wire is not going anywhere, I still like to put a rubber band around one of the wires on a bellow. That way I know that this wire goes with this bellow. They seem to be the same length, but it's just a habit that I get into that way I know that this wire goes with this bellow and if the wire comes off on the other bellow it don't really matter because I have a rubber band around this wire for that bellow next I'll be taking out the chains already have the hooks off and the uh, book says that the chains are 42 links per foot I believe let me verify that for you 
there are some good things about this book that I do like. Yes, the required chains have 42 links per foot. And as you will notice, I have two different chains on here. One is a one day movement and this is an eight day movement chain. So we'll have to fix that issue. And there's also this string that comes down. And this string that comes down, if your clock is cuckooing uh, the wrong sequence, then you pull on this chain, this string, to... Uh, To catch up the sequence, find something to cut the string because I got a nut tied to it. So next I got some screws to take out. So we're going to take those screws out and we'll get back to you. In a regular uh, cuckoo clock, the wire that connects to the bird door is typically connected to one of these two holes that is on the bracket of the bird, but not with the shots. The shots cuckoo clock, this bracket right here, one of these two holes, is what is connected to the door on a Schatz cuckoo clock. This counterweight right here is attached to the bird. As you can see, when I lift it up, the bird goes up in the air. This counterweight right here is attached to that lever that I told you is attached to the door. And if you look at the opposite, this section right here is all part of that system. If your bird is not going back in the door, more than likely, it's going to be this lever right here that hits this frame is bent wrong. Because if it was bent straight up in the air, then, sorry, not straight up in the air. If it was bent down further as it is right now, your bird would stay outside the door what allows it to go out the door and how far it goes out the door is this tab right here that hits the the front plate so if your bird is just not coming out as far as you want you might have to bend this tab right here out of the out some so it allows the bird to go out the door more. This counterweight right here that I told you is for the bird also could be hitting this frame right here or it could be hitting this down here which will uh, not allow it to go all the way back inside. Now, when the cuckoo is tripped, if I can 
activate these wheels. As you can see, by design, the bird goes in and comes out. And the reason why it does that is on this wheel right here, this wheel right here has a notch in it. Let's see if I can get a better view of that notch. Maybe you could see it, but those lever, this lever goes into that notch as it rotates. I mean, trip it again. Here the lever is on the outside of that wheel. And then it goes in that notch. And when it goes in that notch is when the bird comes back in. And then it gets on top of that wheel again. And the bird goes out. Then it goes in the notch. Then it goes out. And in, out, in, out, in. When it's done... The third wheel warning pin, remember I told you that the third wheel is always next to the governor pin. When it's done, the third wheel warning pin will hit the rack um, uh, stop lever here, tab, this tab right here. So when it's done cuckooing, As you can see, it's going in and out of that notch. And then it stayed in the notch, and the third wheel warning pin hits this tab. There's a lot going on with the shot's movement. At the, um, the gong is supposed to play first, and then the high note lift lever, which in this case is a short lever, and then the low note lift lever, which is this lever right here. And I told you that the high note lift lever bellow, the high note bellow, which has the wire to lift up the bird, is on the right side of the case which it normally is but it takes the short lever in a regular movement it would take the long lever but those levers are over here on this side but on the shots as you can see the levers are on the right side so the high note lift bellow which plays first takes the short lift wire here Y'all seen these plate designs before. I have them in the featured uh, items of my both of my groups. And it's uh, by a, a Dr. Lloyd's book. But there are two shots designs per his book. There's a 50 slash 8, which has these two notches right here at the bottom. And then there's just the plain 50, which doesn't have those two notches. They both take 1,250 grams of weight. This one is 92 inches high, 84.5 inches wide. And they're they're both the same width, same height, but 
one has these notches right here and I'm not for sure what those notches are for and that is the only difference in the uh, movements that I could see and again that these plates are from I have to show you this Dr. Lloyd's The Clock Repairs Bench Manual book. If I don't show you that, I believe it's violating copyright rules. This plate does not have those notches. This is a bitty plate, but I'm pretty sure because I told you that shot states their movements that this was made in 1950. And like I said, I told you that they started in 1950 and made eight day cuckoo clocks for about 10 years. And again, you can see the silhouette of the bird that's how you know it's a shots but a lot of people do not like shots because of this action right here where the bird bounces in and out of the door Well, you could find them uh, for a fairly decent price. The ones that sell for a much higher price are the hunters, the after the hunt hunters cuckoo clock. But a typical clock like this, you could find for typically less than 50 bucks. Eight-day clocks, why you wouldn't like them, I don't, you know. I could get along with the bird bouncing in and out of the door if I didn't have to wind the thing every day. When you look at the gong of the shots clock, there is no spring on it like there is with uh, a regular cuckoo clock. There's this piece of wire right here that stops it from uh, balling all the way down. But as far as a spring with a regular movement, AMF movement, you name it, the gongs typically have a spring wire on them somewhere such as this spring here I believe this is the AMS movement another AMS movement uh, I don't have the the gong on I need to clear out my movements. Here's a uh, regular movement. Here's the gong. Here's the spring. Shots does not have springs on their gongs. They have this wire right here. If this wire was missing, then the gong would fall all the way down uh, to the bottom of the plate. That wire there is what stops it from falling. Also, the um, it, 
the rack stop lever again which is this lever and here's the lift lock lever the lift lock lever has an e-clip right here on the inside of the movement but the rack stop lever in order to take this off you have to undo this screw right here and so you want to take plenty of pictures where this brass piece here is because that is what hits that is what um this piece here is what the door lever hits and so that has to be in the right position As far as timing the clock, and I talked about this before, as far as timing the clock, it, it's still the same. You have to ensure that the third wheel warning pin is hitting the rack stop lever tab and this tab on the rack stop lever falls into what I call the Pac-Man or the gathering cam with gathering pen which is what lifts the rack as it strikes or cuckoos whatever you want to say as you can see the gathering cam with gathering pen is rotating it lifts up the teeth of the rack as this tab catches the rack because if this tab is not catching the rack then the rack would fall after the gathering pen lifted it up so this tab here plays a important part in the strike or the cuckoo and then this tab falls into the cam there's not much of a uh, of a slot on the cam but there's still a indentation on that cam that that tab falls into. Now I'm not going to put bushings in this clock. The clock was running on my wall. I took it down just to do this video. However, because it's an eight day clock and I told you if the hole is oblong to where the pivot goes from one side of that oblong hole to the other side then you should put a bushing in and there are several oblong holes in this movement there's this one right here There's the bird's eye, and this is on the strike side. And then on the time side, there's this wheel right here. And even the center wheel has some play in it. But like I said, this movement was running, keeping time. So I'm not going to put bushings in this clock. 
and um, again, I took this apart to show you how this works. And I just noticed something, but this clock is not missing anything that I'm aware of. There's this hole right here which normally a great wheel would go in. But the great wheel is up here. And that's on the strike side. This was the first shots movement that I worked on. And I have another shots movement. I don't have that many shots movements. Like I said, I got these from Sean Barnes' Boneyard Pile, these clocks. So I'm going to see if I can find my other shots movement and see if the great wheel for the strike side is in the same place. It is easier to show you the book than to try to find my other movement. It's the exact same movement. That is the strike side great wheel. As you can see, it is higher up in the air than the time side great wheel. Here is the same movement with the back plate on. As you can see, the strike side great wheel is not utilized in this hole down here but up here in this hole just like in my movement honestly i don't know why that extra hole is there um, because the um all the functions of the clock are being accomplished with the holes that they are utilizing. I just wanted to find that cam. Here's a picture of that cam that has the a notch in it and that that lever falls into every time it cuckoos and here is a figure drawing that shows you that that L-shaped lever drops into that hole of the wheel every time it cuckoos And here's that wheel again. L-shaped lever falls into that slot, the opening, every time it cuckoos. And it comes out. When it comes out, the bird is outside the door. But when it goes into that opening, the bird comes inside the door. I'm not going to take this movement apart uh, to show you the inside of the movement. There's this picture right here. This is the time side. Grave wheel, second wheel, there's a third wheel right here, and then the escapement wheel. And that what makes it an eight-day clock because it has the extra wheel, great wheel, second wheel, third wheel, escapement wheel.
on the movement itself. Here's the great wheel, the second wheel, that third wheel, which is aligned with the escapement wheel. When I move this, you can see the escapement wheel moving and the uh, birch and crutch assembly moving. Great wheel, second wheel, third wheel, escapement wheel. Again, that is what makes it an eight day clock because it has the extra wheel. The reason why I'm not going to take this clock apart is because I have everything adjusted. And so um, I just was wanting to show you the functioning be behind the uh, cuckoo and why it bounces in and out of the door. The door itself is supposed to stay open. Again, this lever right here, and the wire's in the way. This lever right here is attached to the door. When the clock is done cuckooing, this wedge here moves slightly, and then the door can close. And that's all part of the adjustments. When it's on top of this wedge, right, I'm trying to get it. When it's on top of this wedge, watch this piece right here. The door is now open. After it's done cuckooing, this wedge is supposed to go over to the right and then the door closes. And so in action, watch this lever right here. If I can get it to go in action. Did you see it? It came open. That is on top of that wedge. With this lever right here coming open, that is what opens the door. The door is supposed to stay open until it's done cuckooing and then this lever here goes to the left section of this wedge and again there's not that much adjustment and then the door closes one more time watch this lever right here that is what is connected. That's what pushes the door open. The door comes open. Now the bird is bouncing in and out of the door. I have to adjust my wedge. I'm 
because when it's adjusted properly, the door closes. I'm going to see if I can adjust that. Stand by. As I was saying, there's not that much of adjustment on it. Just that hole right there is about all you have. Now watch this bar and watch this. The door opens. This lever is stand on top of this wedge. Let me trip it more. The door opens. The bird is bouncing in and out, but the door is still open because this lever here is, is standing on top of that wedge, and then the door closed. Let me trip it more so you can see it better. The door is open. The bird cuckoos. I'm going way too fast. I'm going to put this thing on a higher number. Here we go. Again, this lever right here opens the door. This lever right here is going to be on top of this wedge which keeps the door open but the cuckoo would bounce because of the design because that l-shaped lever is gone in and out of that cutaway version of this cam wheel which is actually great wheel, second wheel, third wheel, which is actually the fourth wheel because the third wheel is always the wheel with the warning pen. So here we go. Door opens, bird is uh, bouncing in and out, but the door is staying open because this lever is staying on this wedge. And the door closed. I had to tilt it, so we're going to do it one more time. Cuckoo is bouncing in and out of the door, but the door is staying open. There the door closed. And that, between that and also this lever right here, this lever right here, which is part of the rack and snail. It is adjustable. Watch this. I'm going to hold the rack. This lever is adjustable. Nah, believe it or not, it is adjustable. It slips on this bar. So, you, the easiest way to uh, adjust it is put the thing on the one o'clock position and trip it 
to make sure it is one o'clock versus two o'clock. You see the tab right there? Put it back on the one o'clock position. You see the pen right here. It is touching the one o'clock position. And so when I trip this, the tab should be in the one o'clock position, but it's not. It's on the point. And so this has to be, you put it in the tab and then you adjust this lever to, uh, so it, so it, um, falls into the one o'clock position on the rack. And when you go to adjust the uh, uh, gong, high note, and low note lift levers, the low note lift lever has to be in the middle of one of these eight point star wheels and as I trip the uh, system you will notice that the gong hits first and then the high note and then the low note gong high note low note gong high note low note gong high note low note and you will also notice Again, that the door opens first, then the bird, and then the door is going to stay out because this lever here is on this tab of this wedge. Doors out, door stays out because it's hitting that wedge. And then it all goes back in. I don't know if you could bend this down some because this has got to do with the door. If I was to bend this down some, whether it, the door would quit bouncing, I might just break it. No, the door slaps a little bit, but it's just the way the system is designed. The cuckoo bounces in and out of the door, and the door slaps a little bit. Um, this lever here hits the uh, wedge 
but because of the counterweight, as you can see, the counterweight brings it back and forth. There's nothing that I can see that is stopping the door from doing that and that's because of the counterweight I said uh, with the shots because they have the hole in the case you tie a string or wire whatever you want to do uh, to this lever right here which is the lift lock lever and if the uh, clock is in the cuckooing in the wrong position you pull on that string until it cuckoos in the right position here I have it on my stand I want to talk about this bracket assembly <coughs> excuse me this bracket assembly is held in a place by this nut right here and a piece like a novelty clock where a piece of metal goes through a hole and then they twist that piece of metal this bracket assembly is really cheaply made as far as um, how it's secured to the movement and if this piece down here is bent out too much you see how the um, the bracket assembly is kind of flush with the um, the brackets that mount the movement to the case. I think in this case right here, it's too flush. Like I said, it's, it's loose. And so when you mount this in the case, all this will bind up against the the case if it's too far forward of these bracket assemblies so you need to pay attention to that and I'm not going to mount this back into the case it's a cheap case like I said I don't have the top or the hands and stuff are missing on the dial I'm just going to use this uh movement for future um, explanations to people who have questions but this lever right here when it is activated uh, the cuckoos in sequence this is part of the door lever and it's going to go on top of this brass wedge. And that will keep the door open. It's going to go just like that. It might bounce a little bit. But uh, it's, it's going to keep the door open. But because of the design, the cuckoo bird, because of the way it's designed with the counterweight, that you see up in the air right here this counterweight back here and the cuckoo bird bounces back and forth and like I said before if your cuckoo bird is not going back into the door it might be because this lever this tab right here is bent wrong So with this string, I'm going to activate 
it in sequence. And I can get the chain off and we'll talk about it all. Here that lever is on that wedge. The cuckoo, like I said, is bouncing back and forth because of the uh, weight. And then when it's done, this lever that rides that edge, it goes to the right of that. This lever here that rides on top of this wedge, it goes to the right of the wedge, which closes the door. In warning, I can get it to, uh, in warning, the, uh, I probably need to put a hand on it. I don't know if you saw the fan move. In warning, the third wheel warning pen will bypass this tab that's on the rack stop lever. And then, and that's going to be about five minutes till the hour. And then on the hour, the, the third wheel warning pin is now catching the tab that's on the lift lock lever. This lever right here. This lift lock lever is what hits the tabs that are on the Minute Arbor center wheel. This is the lift lock lever. Right now that third wheel warning pin is hitting this tab that's on the lever, on this section of the lever. And that's about five minutes till the hour. And when this drops, the third wheel warning pin will be able to turn and then the clock goes into cuckoo i'm going to rotate this thing around quite a bit so we could watch that again Okay, it, it's in warning right now. The rack has dropped. The third wheel warning pin is hitting this lever right here. And it's about five minutes till the hour. On top of the hour, the third wheel warning, this lever here is going to drop which allows the third wheel warning pin to bypass the tab on this lift lock lever and then the clock will go into cuckoo just like it is now and again the cuckoo bird bounces back and forth by design because of the counterweight back here a cuckoo bird goes out, the counterweight makes it come back. Cuckoo bird goes out, the counterweight makes it come back. That's just by design. That's why a lot of people do not like the shots cuckoo clocks. Even though they're eight-day cuckoo clocks, a lot of people don't like them because the cuckoo bird goes in and out by design on a typical cuckoo clock if your clock is going in and out by design um, in and out of the door then you can fix that and I have videos on how to fix it but on a shots cuckoo clock they are designed to go in and out of the door And 
and if I pull on the string, it's going to allow it to kick you. And the string lifts um, the lift lock lever. The clock is now in warning. And when I let go of the string, the lift lock lever is going to drop and allow that third wheel warning pin to spin, which will allow the clock to cuckoo. I need a bigger room. When I pull on the string, the governor wheel is going to spin. Because right now that third wheel warning pin is hitting the tab on the rack stop lever. When I pull on the st string, the governor wheel will spin just a time to put the clock in warning to allow that third wheel warning pin to go from up here to down here and again right now the third wheel warning pin is in this area but when it goes into warning it rotates to this area to where it's hitting the tab on the lift lock lever now watch the governor as i pull in the string see it spun that allowed the clock to go into warning when I let go of the string, the governor wheel is going to spin and it's going to cuckoo. And this, Again, the uh, shots movements take 1,250 gram weights. If your clock is cuckooing too fast, you might have too heavy of a weight on it. If it's cuckooing too slow, you need to put 1,250 gram of weights on it. And if your clock is cuckooing too fast and you have 1250 gram weights then I would look at the governor fan to make sure it's tight when I go like that when the clock is done cuckooing the governor fan will spin a little bit but if it sits there and rotates several revolutions then you need to tighten it up and the proper way to tighten the governor fan up is to take the governor fan out of the movement, take the shaft out of this blade, tighten up the brass parts, put the shaft back in the blade, give it a flick to make sure it doesn't rotate several times. The reason why it's rotating now is because I'm turning the wheels backwards. This is that bent tab section right here that I told you how this assembly is attached. That piece of metal goes in that hole and they bend it over. Uh, to to uh, help hold it in. It's that and it's attached to the shaft of the movement. And so it's very, I guess you could say flimsy. And uh, you do not want this 
bracket assembly to stick out further than the arm assembly that you screw the movement into the case with because if you do it's going to get caught um, this lever right here will get caught on the case of the wood and so it will mess up how many times it cuckoos again i'm not going to put this movement back into the case i'm going to use it to discuss the shat's movements like i have all my other movements on my desk I hope y'all enjoyed this video presentation. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't understand the shats movements. I tried to explain all I could. No, I didn't take the movement apart. It's uh, you take pictures. I provided you the picture of the. Uh, of the movement taken apart from the book. I showed you that that L-shaped arm goes into the um, uh, cutaway version of the uh, fourth wheel. And so um, you should be able to figure it out on your own, take plenty of pictures. Uh, but there's there's a lot of people who do not like the shots cuckoo clocks. I personally like them myself. Um, I just have the wrong case for the for this clock. I don't like the case, and that's why I'm not gonna uh, put this movement back in the case. I might have another shots case around here. Like I said I I bought. A bunch of parts off of Sean Barnes, who's a good friend of mine who works on clocks professionally for a living. And uh, uh, some of those parts included this shot's cuckoo clock. Uh, but they were parts movements, parts cases. And so uh, the. <clears throat> Hunter's shots, cuckoo clocks sell for a lot more money than your basic style cuckoo clock like this. Um, you can pick the shots, cuckoo clocks up for fairly cheap compared to other cuckoo clocks. And you have to remember, it's an eight day cuckoo clock. But what people don't like about them is the fact that the bird comes in and out of the door while it's cuckooing. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, uh, video series of me explaining the shots, uh, cuckoo clocks. Um, stay tuned for the next video series. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it will be exciting, and hopefully we learn things. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, because it's free to do so. And uh, I take my time and I, I show you, or try to show you, everything that you need to know about repairing a cuckoo clock. If you have a question... Um, contact me you can contact me through my YouTube channel you can contact me on Facebook you can contact me on the two groups that I manage on Facebook but uh, anyway until next time may God bless each and every one of you